We're turning our attention from Psalm 14 to Psalm 15, and we look at the first two verses of Psalm 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Many scholars believe that David wrote Psalm 15 after he had brought the ark of the Lord to the tabernacle at Jerusalem. David was a man who had a heart for God. He loved the Lord. And he wanted to be in the presence of the Lord at all times. And he knew that even the priest who went to the house of the Lord uh, would later go home. They don't dwell in the tabernacle forever. They, they go to the tabernacle, work, and go home. But David's desire was really to be in the presence of the Lord at all times. And he's wondering, how can I do that? What, what kind of a person can be in the presence of the Lord at all times? So he asked two questions that uh, he tries to answer throughout the psalm. First is, who may abide in your tabernacle? The key word to note there is the word abide. It is a word that is used to describe a traveler who finds a rest stop or a resting place and, and, and stays there and gets refreshed and gets renewed so that he can continue his journey. So the first thing David is talking about, who can find rest in the presence of God? Who can abide in the presence of God and find rest for his soul? The second question he asks who may dwell in your holy hill. Now, both the tabernacle and holy hill are describing the presence of God. But the key word to note here is the word dwell. The word dwell is a different word from the word abide. The word dwell means a settler, somebody who has settled, who is not a stranger, who is a citizen, and stays permanently in a place. So at first he says, I want to come to your presence, get refreshed, go back and get refreshed. But I actually want to take a second step. I want to be in your presence constantly. I want to settle there. So those are the two questions that David is answering in Psalm 15. Who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill. So he begins to answer those two questions and he talks about uh, three qualities here. First, that the person who wants to enjoy the presence of God constantly must walk uprightly. That talks about moral uprightness, live a morally upright life. So it's, it's possible to love God and not live morally. Yes, you would know God is there. You may experience him off and on, but you will not do what David is talking about. Dwell in his presence at all times. Be refreshed by him at all times. Your Christian life will be an in and out kind of thing. But if you really want to be in the presence of God and really have a continuous relationship with him, the answer, first, walk uprightly. Then the second thing he says is that the person must work righteousness. That means that the person must be just in his ways and the way he treats people. You cannot desire to be in the presence of God and treat people shabbily. And, and try to destroy people, gossip about them, uh, you know, be unfair in your judgment. You have to work righteousness. The righteousness must be an activity, something that you do. So this is talking about being just, being fair in the way you treat people. And the third thing David is talking about, speak the truth from the heart, not from the mouth, but from the heart. Because many times people say things from their mouth, and it's not what is in their heart. In their heart, they want to kill you, but in their mouth, they say, I love you so much. So David says, if you want to be in the presence of the Lord and not be a stranger in the presence of the Lord, if you want to dwell there, then he starts with these three things that we must do. We must walk uprightly, we must work righteousness, and we must speak the truth from the heart. That's something to chew on for today. Let's pray. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I want to experience your presence at all times. Help me to live a life that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we'll continue tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mesa Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.